Welcome back to Photo 101, your resource for all things photography. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for the latest content. And if you enjoy this video, hit that like button. Today, let's head up and above it all for a look at the art of aerial photography. In a time of Google Earth and off-the-shelf drones, aerial photography feels more within reach than ever before. Yet it wasn't too long ago that the idea of capturing a bird's eye view was quite a feat. Over time, it evolved and the applications grew more diverse, from surveying and city planning to intelligence gathering and reconnaissance. Today, artists continue to push the boundaries of what we can learn about ourselves and the world around us by taking to the skies. On a clear morning in 1858, just a few short decades after the advent of photography, a strange sight greeted the residents of Paris, France. Suspended over 200 feet above the ground in a balloon, a man wrestled with a wet plate camera inside a small basket, carefully framing the city below. The occasional wind gust made the work harder, and the gas providing the balloon its lift kept reacting with the photochemistry. For the man with the camera, Gaspard Félix Ternachon, better known as Nadar, the pairing of photography and flight was an exciting blend of his two biggest passions. Once safely back on the ground, the images he produced during this short flight marked the world's first aerial photographs. While the original prints are lost to time, his views of the city from above profoundly shifted our collective experience of the world and our place within it. Nadar's pioneering use of photography paved the way for later innovations, and in the following decades, photographers would pair cameras with kites, gliders, and even the humble city pigeon. Many photographers are happy to share the harrowing backstories of what it took to get the shot. But what if you found yourself staring down a torpedo in the Mediterranean, or stranded on an Arctic island? What about being dropped from a plane into the Chesapeake Bay? All in a day's work for Maggie the Indestructible, otherwise known as Margaret Burke White. Born in New York City in 1904, Burke White was interested in photography from an early age and made it a career by the 1930s. In 1936, she was named the first female photojournalist for Life magazine, playing a key role documenting large-scale public works and the social impacts of the Dust Bowl throughout the United States. At the onset of World War II, she became the first woman to serve in combat by accompanying the U.S. Air Force in Europe. From over 20,000 feet up, Burke White commanded a large format film camera fixed with a special lens for aerial photography in order to gather intelligence and assess the progress of the war. A fearless soul, Burke White's war correspondence was just one facet of a career in photography that spanned key events in world history. There are countless expressions in English for the clarity that comes with seeing the world from above, whether it's our planet's unique geology or the infrastructure we impose on the landscape. A bird's eye view always offers a fresh perspective. This was the aim of photographer Pablo Lupe's Luz in his series Fronteras. In the work, we're confronted by a unique juxtaposition. A landscape appears divided. In one image, urban sprawl abruptly stops at an unseen line. In another, rolling hillsides and canyons are bisected, creating a division where one hadn't existed before. With the project, Lopez Luce investigates what he calls the open wound of the U.S.-Mexico border and sought to frame its social, political, and environmental impacts in a new way. Logging over 1,200 miles of flight time along the expansive border, Lopez Luce invites us to consider how our collective actions play out along a once unbroken landscape. If you enjoy this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You can check out all our resources on photography and more at mopa.org.